This video explains double exponential smoothing idea. So actually this is double exponential smoothing is expanded version of exponential smoothing idea but of also for this case we just include uh, trend adjustment. So generally uh, uh, we, we just use for simple exponential smoothing case we just use this equation 15. I mean simply we have this. I mean our uh, we just assign alpha weight factor on our actual data and the remaining is our previous uh, forecasting information that is uh, you know general simple simplify simplify the you know exponential smoothing for this case if we have some trend then we can actually we have to uh, add this trending factor as well to do that we can use another beta beta smoothing factor so this beta smoothing factor case we use what uh, 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 we have we we have two different parts and I mean our final forecasting consists of two parts. One is F F is unadjusted forecast and T is a trending factor. So we consist of these two and this case we just additive form right and we just use this one this is af is our final adjusted forecasting idea and this adjusted forecasting idea consists of two parts and general f and also trending for trending case we use a beta you know smoothing factor for this beta smoothing factor we just give you know beta weight weight of beta on our previous trend i mean ft plus 1 minus ft this is also trend right also our um, forecasted trend forecast trend is t t well so we multiply one minus beta times uh, t so we uh, use this kind of uh, information and uh, uh, we apply these three equation and uh, uh, i do not memorize all these uh, whenever i have this kind of you know information every time i just look at this information so you need to know how to plug this you know formula that is more important so here is our data for this case we for exponential smoothing double exponential smoothing we need the very first forecasting numbers right and here we have actual sales uh, this is uh, the actual sales is at 74, 79, 80, and 90, 1, 5, 142, 122. If we have this kind of actual sales, and then first of all, you have to uh, visualize this data, insert this, and then if you plot this chart, and there must be some trending. You know idea right so you have to visit oh now we have to add some trending factor so we have to forecast our idea not simply exp uh, not simply exponential or weight moving average but for this case we need to include we need to take into account you know trending factor to do that first of all we can use ft ft is an other factor and the tt is a trending factor af is actually tt plus uh, ft and we can forecast this to do that first of all we have uh, uh, 75 and 1 these are very first information right and also later on we can compute the mad and the mape mad and the mape our uh, forecast measure and also we have alpha number and the beta number so alpha number is a smoothing factor 0.3 and beta number is 0.4 so we just add name so we just create name so and I just highlight this and click formula create name and then you can add name from left column so we have alpha beta numbers and first of all AF so if you look at this equation equation number 14 what is AF AF uh, this case AFT AFT case simply FT plus uh, TT so we just uh, add this information and also what is FT FT case we 
compute alpha times d. What is d? d is previous actual data plus 1 minus alpha times af, previous af. So if you look at this equation, the first equation, this equation, so please be careful, please be careful on this t index. For ft case, we have t plus 1, next period, and this dt, we just use t period, and the af case, t period means this is previous uh, period, right? So that's why for this case, next period, period 2 case, we use period 1 information, and period 1 information for actual data, and period 1 for af. So we have done this, and the, what is tt? So tt case, we can compute the beta times uh, uh, ft minus uh, ft plus 1 minus ft, ft plus F, f2 minus f1. So this is our beta term, and the other 1 minus beta case, we multiply tt. So actually, this difference between this ft, ft plus 1 minus ft is, you know, uh, actual trend, and the tt is our previous forecasted trend. So that's why we mix this actual and the forecast number. Then we have, we just complete these first two, and then we can, we can compute these numbers. And we have too many decimal points, uh, so we just use, uh, we can decrease decimal size like this. And uh, this is our forecast number. Our final forecast number is 131. And also, uh, we can compute MAD. MAD is mean absolute deviation, actually actual minus our forecast number, and then we can compute ABS number, and we just compute up to here, and uh, MAP is MAD divided by our actual you know, baseline. So we just compute this number, actually this is our percent number, and also you can increase decimal point, so we can change our decimal point like this. And uh, finally, we can compute average number of this. This MAD is 11, this is a unit, but in this case, uh, our uh, MAPE is actually 10%. 10% is good accuracy. And also, you can uh, highlight these actual sales, and uh, you can highlight uh, this AF, then you can add another chart. Then this this is actually your uh, forecast data and your uh, lagging forecast information. So if you look at this, and even if there is uh, some decreasing trend at the end, but uh, the forecast information they just forecast their you know increasing factor. So that's why you know if there is some increasing or decreasing a certain period, then uh, you know, forecasting data will be all the time will be behind. That's, you know, a major problem. But anyhow, uh, you can uh, do this double exponential smoothing idea using Excel. So you can, we have uh, two different terms. One is unadjusted forecast and also we have a trending factor and our final forecast consists of these two. So we have uh, two different smoothing factor, alpha and the beta. So uh, who can decide this alpha and beta? Actually, you have to decide this alpha and beta as a forecasting expert.